welcome to our review on currents and fields. Now, the first thing we need to know is that when we've got a wire and a current flows through that wire, then a magnetic field is generated around it. And the shape of that magnetic field is a series of concentric circles. And you can actually see that in the left hand side of the screen there. Now, one thing that we do need to be able to work out is the direction of that particular field generated by the current. And the way that we do that is by using our right hand as shown by the pictures in the middle. So if you actually make your thumb up, OK, so just like you're about to hitch a lift somewhere, then your thumb is pointing in the direction that the current is traveling in and your fingers, the way they curl round, they tell you the direction the magnetic field lines travel in. So if we've got a current pointing up, then you can see that the actual magnetic field lines are going in an anti-clockwise direction. Whereas if the current is facing down, then if you have a look, those field lines are going in a clockwise direction. So just make sure you remember that if you want to work out the direction of the actual magnetic field lines around a single piece of wire, your thumb points the direction of the current and your fingers, the way they curl, they point the direction of the magnetic field lines. And remember to use your right hand for that one. If you were asked how we could show in the lab or in an experiment how to prove that a wire actually produces a magnetic field when current flows through it, then all we'd actually need to do is connect our wire into a circuit. So just a very basic one, just with a cell and a switch in there, and then place a compass under that wire. And what we'd actually find is that when you close the switch and the current's flowing, then the actual alignment of the compass is going to go along with the field lines for that actual wire. So you'll see the compass needle move away from pointing towards our magnetic north pole for the Earth towards obviously the field lines that are being created as a result of the current flowing through the wire. There are actually two things that our magnetic flux strength or magnetic flux density depend upon. The first one is the actual magnitude or the size of the current. So if we've got a bigger current, then we have a stronger magnetic field. The second is the distance it is from the actual wire. So the closer you actually are to the wire itself, then the stronger that magnetic flux will be. When we're actually talking about measuring our actual magnetic field strength, then we use these units called Teslas, which are given the capital T as their unit. The next thing we need to consider is a loop of wire. So what we've actually got in the bottom left is a little diagram showing a loop of wire passing through a piece of card and the field lines associated with it. So if you look in the center of that loop, what you can actually see is that we've got a straight line. When you look at where the loop goes through the pieces of paper, you can see that we've got those concentric circles again. Now, when we're actually looking at this on an exam paper, they may draw it as just a symbol representation of the direction of the current. Now, the way that you work out what direction the current is going in is by looking in the middle. If you look at the diagram on the right hand side, you can see that the downward current has a cross in the center and the upward current is a dot. Now, the way to think of that is just think of a dart. So if you've thrown a dart at a piece of paper, when you're looking at it, then you've got the cross made by the end of the flight. Now that's showing you that it's pointing down through the paper, hence why we've got the cross in the downward current. Whereas if it was coming towards us, we would have the point of the dart facing towards us, hence why it is just a little dot in the center. So just remember the diagram representations of the direction of the current, because they could use those on an exam and ask you to work out the direction that the magnetic field is traveling in. And again, we just go back to using our right hand and then point your thumb in the direction of the current and look at your fingers to work out the field line direction. If we're talking about a coil of wire, then we can also refer to this as a solenoid. Now, what we actually find is that if we've got a large number of loops of wire in that coil, then we can generate a stronger field. So basically, the more coils, the stronger the field will be. If we still wanted to increase the strength of that field further, then we could actually place a magnetic material in the center of that coil. And what we actually find is by doing that, then as the current flows, it creates an induced magnet 
in that magnetic material and that increases the strength of our magnetic field further. Now what we're talking about when we've got a magnetic material placed in the centre of a coil that then becomes an induced magnet as current flows through is something called an electromagnet. So basically it's something that becomes magnetised when current flows through and you should have looked at those back in key stage three. And what we find is that those electromagnets can actually be made to be much stronger than any permanent magnet that we've got. And one of the key places that we actually use those is in MRI scanners. So MRI scanners have these incredibly strong electromagnets and what they're actually going to do is then take images of the body using those magnetic fields that it's generating.